Hi, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very much for your time. We appreciate your time, and I am sure that y'all would appreciate your time as well when we are reading the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. All right, gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Good. good. Everyone all right? Yep. Yeah. Are you sure? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. All right, so we're checking on everybody out there, and we would like to extend our greeting for our little round table that we have here. We have a little round table that is probably... Three Two, feet. Yeah, three feet at tops, and uh, I can reach out and cl club any one of my kids at any one time that I need to. Um, it's that close, and so, but we, when we are with you guys, we extend it out, uh, and we pull up the chairs for everybody who are out there, and we really appreciate it. And so we are, I'm going to go over a couple of comments yesterday that we got regarding this, and um, one was from our dear sis, Carla. And it was in regard to why are women uncling longer, well, when they birth a girl, why are they uncling longer than men, uh, boys? And so we are trying to figure this out. And we didn't know. Does any of you guys have any other? Um, nobody had any ideas on there. No. Yeah, so how long is a female cling after giving birth? Uncling. Uncling. Uh, yeah. How, it's like after giving birth to a male, it's 33 days. Ah. Uh, no, first we have seven you days. Yeah, seven days. Then we circumcise on the eighth, then we have 33 days yes. more. So 40 days is what you're talking about. I don't know about that because I don't know if it adds, because if we had the eighth day, it'd be 41 days. 41 days, it could be, right? Be 40 so, or 41 days, somewhere in between there. So roughly that. And if a, in today's society where we don't have priests, where we can't take this stuff, would a woman still be unclean? I think in the eyes of Yah, maybe. Yes. And so somebody wrote in, uh, I think it was, I, I can't remember who it was, honestly, so I won't even try. But somebody was mentioning that. It it is a uh, it, you're not it's not a bad thing to be unclean. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, being unclean was kind of a normal thing. You get people get unclean all the time, so I don't think it would be. It's not a bad thing. You're just like wash up. Go what does it mean though to be unclean? If you're unclean, what wouldn't you do? You would separate yourself from Yah. Yeah, so you're not you're not in a uh, preparation state. You're not prepared to meet with Yah. So if you're unclean, and so that goes uh, that goes with uh, Yah always wanting us to have clean hands, clean hearts, clean minds, clean souls, and everything about that. And so when we meet up with Yah, we we don't want to be in that state. So if a woman had a boy today and went basically what 41 days or 40 days, how would they? How would they sacrifice right now? How would they become unclean? They'd, or how would they become clean? They'd repent using the blood of Yahushua. Yeah, so it'd be a prayer. We'd have to we'd have to plead the blood of Messiah Yahushua, and um, that would have to be what we would do on that. But they are still unclean as per this. So this is from Carla. Um, she says, uh, share my thoughts. I believe when a woman gives birth to a female child, the mother's time is doubled for being unclean, Possibly because Eve presented the fruit of the tree of life to Adam, and also because she transgressed against Yahuwah first. So, that was one thing she had, and then she actually does two on here. And then we had one from the Grand, and the Grand says, Could it be because the female has the potential to reproduce, to have the monthly cycle which deals with blood? And then she says, Love you, Goofy Grannies. And we, yeah, we love you too, Grand. We, we appreciate you. And then Carla came up with more, and she actually did a little bit of research on this. And so, um, to the Bereans, we, we salute you. Um, so, so, she says this, in reference, do you guys not get that? No, 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 that? no I, don't, I don't know what a Berean is. A Berean is um, a sect of religious people that were really, if you're supposed to study like the Bereans, you're, they, they sat there and studied all the time. And so, if you study like the Bereans, these, these guys don't just take, like, ah, all food has been made cling. Right? They would go and they read through the scriptures, they read through the scriptures again, they read through it again. The Bereans were the people that were like really good. So we want to study like the Bereans. So as Carla studied like the Bereans, here's her answer. In reference to the question, why are women unclean longer after giving birth to a child? I found other scriptures referencing when a woman is considered unclean. Scriptures, Leviticus 12, that's what the one we did yesterday. So Leviticus 15, 9 through 25, Leviticus 17, 11. Leviticus 20, 18, Luke 8, 43 and 48, Mark 5, 25 and 34, and Matthew 9, 20 through 22. There's more to list here, but there seems to be a common theme about the discharge of blood making both man and woman and the things they touch unclean. We know that, the, that being unclean makes us spiritually impure and that it separates us from Yah. Spiritual impurity was introduced to the world when Adam and Eve sinned. 
So when a woman is pregnant, she is carrying life and the lifeblood of the unborn child. After the child is born, after get birth, and the blood that is shed is death from sin. For this reason, I believe women are unclean two times longer after birthing a female child as a result of Eve's being first to sin against Yah as well as Adam's sin. Also, Yah told Adam and Eve the penalty for the transgression was death, and the years of man's life became less and less. So, um, that's, that's those are interesting things to note that we would um, probably not be noting at this point if it wasn't for our sis Carla. And so, we appreciate you, Carla. Thank you very, very much on this. And um, I think we should just get into this. So, let's uh, begin with a handy dandy split screen. And today, we today's a little bit longer. So, um, gentlemen, I ask that you guys give me your full attention. Nobody yawning, nobody passing out on me. Um, and let's see what we can do. All right, so here we go. Leviticus 13. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and El Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto El Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons, the priests. Okay, so what, what are we dealing with here? Uh, leprosy. Yeah, with this, with this, if you guys had a big zit on your forehead, would you need to go to the priest? I would assume so. I would have cause it had a swelling, like whether it is a yeah, scab, scab or a bright spot. I'm pretty sure he did So what happens when spot. we had a whole bunch of teenagers? Would you all be running into the priest all the time trying to... Uh, I don't know. At some point, Aaron probably like, okay, guys, just... Well, I mean, it, we get into it where just, like, he examines it, and he's probably like, oh, this is normal. You're just, you're just growing up. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is eaten off by leprosy. Okay. Um, or to one of the sons of priests. All right. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white and the plague in sight, it be deeper than the skin of his flesh. It is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. Okay. So, I mean, that, that seems good enough. I mean, it's, so if your hair is turned white... What happens if you have white hair anyway? I don't know. How, how did that even happen? tossed outside the camp. All right. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in the sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut up him that has the plague seven days. All right. So if you if you have uh, white hair on it, there's a problem. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and behold, there's again, there's a seven day right there's a pattern of sevens why why didn't he say nine days why didn't he say ten days why don't you come back in two weeks or something of the sort he's always cycles of seven and behold if the plague is plague in his sight be at a stay and the plague spread not in the skin then the priest shall shut him up seven more days okay so he's got two weeks of this or what we know is of two weeks and the priest shall look on him again the seventh day, and behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him cling, it is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. All right, so real quickly, um, we have gone out of this kind of society. We have, we have taken what we used to have as priests, and now we have a what they call the Rod of Hermes, and, it's, and it has two snakes going up it. And if you guys see any of the logos of anything in medicine, the ambulance is flying by you. It has two snakes going up a pole. So the priests used to be our doctors. They used to be, if you had a sickness or you were sick or something, of the sort, you go to the priest, right? But now we have uh, unholy priests. And I say they're unholy priests. They're not even priests. They're like probably Satan's priests is my guess. Um, they could be witches and warlocks with their little potions. Yeah, they, they actually are. You know, the sorcery. And the num the number three killer, actually it's probably now the number one. The number three killer of all of everybody in North America used to be doctor's uh, mistakes. Um, after 2019, I would say the number one killer of people across the world are doctors. I'm just going to leave it at that. And with those with eyes to see and ears to hear, you guys know exactly why it is that it is. Seven. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he has been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that, behold, the scab spreads in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. Bad day. Bad day, bro. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising. 
So I guess when you have leprosy, it like maybe kills your hair follicle or something that makes it turn white. I don't know. It is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh. And the priest shall pronounce him unclean and shall not shut him up for he is unclean. All right. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that has the plague from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looks, then the priest shall consider and behold, if the leprosy have covered all of his flesh, he shall pronounce him unclean that he has pronounce him cling that has the plague. It is all turned white. He is cling. All right. But when raw flesh appears in him, he shall be unclean. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've seen pictures starting in 2020 of people all over the world now look like they have leprosy. In fact, they look like they have uh, shingles. It looks like they have uh, heart explosions. They have all sorts of stuff. It's just a madhouse. Is leprosy even a thing? Is leprosy still around? Is there such thing as leprosy anymore? I don't know. I don't, think I've ever, I don't think I've ever known anybody with leprosy. I don't know, but if you've seen the pictures of the people these days, they all look like they have leprosy. They're all on death's door. And so the people, you know, the doctors are the number one killers of the people. And uh, again, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, you guys know what I'm saying. I can't say it on YouTube, right? It's gone against. They, they, they don't like pure truth. Okay, so... And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest. And the priest shall see him. And behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that has the plague. He is clean. Okay, so what are we dealing with here? It's so, like if it's like just like raw, like I guess best. If the raw flesh turns white, then I guess when the priest sees him, he's like, all right, you're better now? Uh, yeah, I guess white white hair isn't so good, right? White hair, but I guess whatever, like whatever the raw flesh is, whatever turns raw white, flesh it's like, be like festering sores. That's what all the people across yeah. the world look like now. And yeah, and so when it turns white, I guess they're I guess like, good. Might, might, have, might be like scabbed over or something. Maybe like some kind of white scab or something? I don't know. Or like, yeah. like scarred up over it. Yeah, but a raw flesh is obviously something not a good... There's obviously all right. something wrong. Yeah. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him cling that has the plague, he is cling. The flesh also, in which even if in the skin thereof was a boil and is healed, and in place of the boil there be a white rising or a bright spot, white or and somewhat reddish, and it be showed to the priest, and if when the priest sees it, behold, it be in the sight lower than the skin... And the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the boil. I mean, how do you get leprosy? There's leprosy just like, it's like gangrene, I think. Or something. I think it has to do with uh, cl some sort of cleanliness, I think. I don't know. It's like you get. But remember, it didn't, it transfers from humans into walls, remember? Mm -hmm. Because you can actually have your whole house torn down, because I, I think we'll read it further. I where think, yeah, I think we're about to talk about uh, other stuff. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how you get leprosy. Um, I honestly do not know. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs therein, and if it not be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. That'd be just wonderful news. How would they get rid of leprosy? Is they wait Dude, you go. You go die. You wait to die. Chronic infection caused by bacteria. Yes. Yeah, so. Nicole speaks from afar. I don't know if you'll hear her. What'd she say? What'd she say? I said leprosy is a chronic infection caused by bacteria. Yeah, so you guys probably should wash more so we don't end up with leprosy here. What? <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. The kids are all offended. I'm not. <laughs> just, no, we're, it's, it is. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's bacteria, right? Some kind yeah. of bacteria. I don't know what that bacteria is, but maybe some soap would help this thing for a bit. Maybe they didn't have soap back then. I'm sure they had soap. They had have something, right? But I don't know if they had like soap soap that we have now. Maybe I don't know. I think came out of Egypt. Probably sure they... chemical free soap. They had better soap than we have now. Yeah, all the all the soaps and everything is all GMO based and it all like kills you. Like all this stuff, women's all this deodorants and all that stuff is all plagued with cancer or causing death. Everything. So it's probably better just to be stinky these days. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good Good job, Jobs. Okay. Here we go. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof, there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burns have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white. 
then the skin shall look upon it. And behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned white, and it be in the sight deeper than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out of the burning. Wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy. Okay, how do they tell if it's deeper than the Did skin? Did yours say burning? Uh, it says burning. Uh, no, I don't think. Oh, in the burn, in the burn. In the burn, yeah. It is a leprosy broken out of the burning. Mine says in the burn. Um, it says yours is in the burn? In the burn. If a leprosy um, broken out in the burn. So it might, I mean, be considered a burn. Um, so here it is. So if they have something that, it's all about the white hairs. And Eli, it looks like you might have leprosy, bro. You got white hairs on your arm. He's blonde. Oh, he's blonde. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably it. Okay. Um, 25. Okay. So if it is, um, the hair turns white and the sight is deeper than the skin. So that means there's like your skin has like, it has a big, uh, hole in it. I mean, there's like, it's deeping. It goes down. All right. Um, 26. 26. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. There's seven again. And the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. Now, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, I hate to say it, but I'm a picker. I'm one of those guys that um, if I have like a scab or something or a, uh, an abscess or something weird, I, I rip that right off. I don't know so much as I would, I might just try to take out the leprosy. You know, I might just pick that sucker off. Take uh, it at the source. Yeah, I mean, if that's the, if that's the gig, you know, let's rip that whole thing off. All right. Let's go. 29. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard. Ah! Ah, the beard! All right, and so. And I'd be such chin. Chin, okay. It would be beard. We yeah, don't want to yeah. be a beta male. I'm telling you guys something. You guys, something you don't know. My kids here don't know this, but when you guys get zits under a beard, it is incredible. I'm telling you. For like those who have beard, in a bad way? It's incredible in a bad way. It is a terrible thing. You don't even know you have zits, and all of a sudden you start itching, and you itch, and all of a sudden it gets real wet, and you just like pop this. You have no idea nothing's there, but if you guys do not touch your zits, I believe they come to a point where they would like take care of themselves. Like You don't need to pop them, because I, I didn't even know I have like zits under my beard, but when I do get them, uh, it just starts itching, and then it breaks open, and then you, you sit there and you pick scabs under your beard, and that is incredible. That's way too much information, but just for anybody out there who's decided to put a beard together, that's what happens. All right. <laughs> my wife's over there laughing. All right. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull. Even a leprosy upon the head or beard. What is a dry skull? What did you guys say? We're on 30, right? 30, right, yeah. Yeah, what okay, do you I don't even have... I don't know anything about... It's the very end of it. Yeah, it is a defiling skin disease, is, is what it says. Eruption, maybe? Okay, I'm going to read that first. And the Kohen shall look at the infection and see if it appears deep in the skin and there's a thin yellow hair in it. Then the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. It is an eruption, a leprosy of the head or beard. So I've always Mine wondered... It's a mange-like... Mange. What like yellow hair is like infected in like anger on hair, right? Is uh, that what we're talking about here? Uh, you know, I don't know. I There'd don't be think an, leprosy it, is the same leprosy that we know it as today. I haven't seen leprosy today. Have you? No, but I think it's different. <laughs> I mean, the way that they're describing things, I think it's like different. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I've seen the lepers, and I mean, it's like, hey, pick up your arm. Your arm just fell off. Does that happen? Is I that, don't know. That was the joke. Is I, that I, what I, happens? <laughs> Does your body parts really possibly get that bad? I suppose it would. You'd rot off. You'd, I mean, I don't know if people seen the pictures. I mean, you have to look in alt media to actually see what's going on with the people today, but everybody's, like, falling to pieces, literally. Okay. So, anyway, do you have more, Nicole? No. Okay. And if the priests look on the plague of the skull... <laughs> Okay, and that's the sore, right? Priest examines the sore. Okay, the skull. Infection. Infection. All right, so the priest looks. Uh, pri please. The priest looks on the plague of the skull, the infection, and behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin, and that there and no black hair in it. That there is no. And there is black no black hair, hair in, in it. it. I'm just reading this real bad. Then the priest shall shut up him that has a plague of the skull seven days. Another seven days. 
And in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the plague and behold, if the skull, the infection spread not and there be in it no yellow hair and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin. Yeah, yellow hair is probably a bad deal, man. I would imagine that's, you're probably in, not doing so sh good. Okay, he shall be shaven. Ah, my boo. Oh, sorry. But the skull shall he not shave and the priest shall shut up him that has the skull seven days more. Always the cycles of seven. And in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the, the infection the skull and behold, if the skull be not spread in the skin, nor it be in sight deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him cling and he shall wash his clothes and be cling. Now, I've oftentimes thought I should probably shave my beard when I have like one of these festering little things. It doesn't happen very often, but you know, for those who have beards, you'll know what I'm saying. If you don't have beards, this is probably new information, probably more information than you want, but here it is. But if the skull spread much in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him and behold, if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for yellow hair. He is unclean. So the thing that you see right here, the priest shall look, right? The priest probably didn't want to touch, right? You're probably like, hmm, you're, <laughs> you're definitely some <laughs> dude coming in, your, his face is like coming off or he's something. Breaking out the magnifying glass. Yeah, he's not going to be sitting there with a, his latex gloves like getting down with this. He's probably just like, mm-hmm. Seven days, we'll see you again. See if you live. Come back and we'll see. Come back and see if he can live through seven. Okay, but if the skull infection be in his sight at a stay, and that there is black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed, he is cling, and the priest shall pronounce him cling. What does your say, Jade? 37. But if the eruption appears to have stayed, and there is black hair grown up in it, the eruption is, is healed, he is clean, and the Kohen shall pronounce him clean. Black hair, good. Yellow hair, not so good. And what if somebody didn't have black hair? What if they had like blonde hair or yeah, brown like Eli, hair? Sit him outside the camp. Let's see what it looks like or, in seven days. Or else they have blonde hair or well, red hair. It's gonna be changing. I think. Uh, if you see. have red hair, I don't know how you have yellow you, yellow hairs though. I don't know where that co would come from. Uh, so I mean, yellow is obviously not a good deal. All right, thirty-eight. If a man also or a woman have the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots. Then the priest shall look, and behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish, white, it is a freckled spot that grows in the skin. He is cling. Okay, so freckles are good. We can look like giraffes. Freckles are good. Yellow hairs are bad. <laughs> and the man whose hair has fallen off his head, he is bald. Ah. <laughs> yet, yet is he cling. Okay. Um, so that, they, I think that that's not just something funny, like you go bald. They were probably freaking out. Yeah, your hair falls out, right? And then all of a sudden your hair's out and it's like, I got leprosy. Sorry, bro, you got bad genetics. Dude, le you guys understand, leprosy was a death sentence, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you sit outside, you got to go, uncling, uncling. Uh, you we, don't want people coming around that. you. I think we get that pretty soon. Yeah, you, you don't, people can't, shouldn't come around you. Like as much as you want to like see your neighbor or, you know, hug your wife, it's over. And then if he says when he loses his hair and it's bald, he's clean. Oh. Yeah, just, oh, sorry, bro. You got bad genetics. Your hair just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're cling, son. You got your bald. No, that's not what it means. I think his hair falls out. Okay. 41. And he that has his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, he is he is forehead bald, yet he is cling. Oh, he's wow. Lying. Wow. All right, I'm going to read that mine. And if the hair has fallen from his forehead, he is bald on the forehead. He is what? clean. What forehead? Like, oh, eyebrows? Is it eyebrows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. made from receding hairline. Could be. It's got to be like his hair still falling out. I don't think it's the forehead like we're thinking. No, I don't think his eyebrows fell out. I didn't say that. I mean, it's on his forehead, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the only idea of the only hair on his forehead. So Do maybe leprosy makes your hair just you you get sick or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. No experience here with leprosy. Forty-two. And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head. <laughs> I don't know why I found that funny. I'm sorry. Or his bald forehead. Okay. So if his hair falls out and he gets sores on it, then he's in bald, bad shape. Okay. Then the priest shall look up on it and behold, if the rising of the sore be white, reddish in his bald head. Or, uh, control yourself. You no, know, I think don't, the only person like we ever heard. I don't think the only person. I don't remember if there's any other people, but El, Elijah. Remember him? Oh, or Elisha. Oh. He was, was Elisha or John? I think it was the same one. The, 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 the Elisha? Yeah, Elisha. Elisha. Because he was, he was really upset because his buddy just leapt up to the sky in like the chariots or whatever. And these kids, and these kids came out and started laughing at him. Mm -hmm. Like, ha 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 ha, baldy. And he had cursed him and the bears came in. Yeah, and but he cursed the, and the bears came in. Yeah, him. he was like, that's the only remembrance I have of in the Bible where someone was actually bald. I don't remember any other stories where someone was bald. So. Ha. All right, well, 
poor Elisha. Oh, well. All right, 43. Um, continue on. Let's, let's be mature here, folks. Then the priest shall look at, read this again. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, <laughs> Eli, stop. If the rising of the sore be white reddish in his bald head or his bald forehead as the leprosy appears in the skin of his flesh, he is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. Does your say utterly unclean? I just pronounce him unclean without fail. Oh, yeah, utterly unclean. His and plague is in his head. So that sounds bad. That sounds really bad. And doesn't like it's, utterly it's, or anything. It says on his head. Yours says in his head? His plague is in his head. Mine says on his head. Can't the NIV. What does the NIV say? On his head. On his head? Yeah. So in his head sounds like it's already like over. Well, I mean, it's, it, it isn't. It's already over if it's in his head and he's utterly unclean. He's done. So just said it's on his head. So I don't... It's probably in his head, dude. This is coming from the inside out. It's probably in and on. Yeah, you, this is bad news. All right. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, unclean, unclean. All right, how do you put a covering? I don't know. Lip? What does your guys say? Mustache? Yeah, that's what I said. Covering. A lip. covering upon his he upper lip. He like a has mask. A, oh, he, that's where this mask came from. The Satanists all... Uh, you know, they put a they put masks on everybody now. Maybe that was covering the upper lip. Or maybe they put like a hood thing like over the like the top like that goes down. Oh, you know he put the hit they put it over there so his spit can come out. So he could be yelling uncling uncling and he's not sitting there spitting out his leprosy at everyone. That's gotta be what it is. I don't know what it is, but that's probably what it is. Alright. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone without the camp, shall be his hab his habitation be. How would this guy eat? People had to deliver it to him, and he had to grab it and like walk it. Like it had to be like disposable dishes to throw it away when you're done. Yeah, everything he touches. That means if he doesn't have a family, and nobody loves him. Um, he's I'm probably sure, going to starve. Sure that, I'm, I'm sure, sure there was rules and regulations for like helping the. Like, it's like the poor and the widow. You got to go help him. Not like the Even guys. the unclean guy. Nobody's going to want to go see the unclean guy. I'm Everyone's sure going to be freaked out. Like this is. I mean, if this stuff goes and it ends up in your house, and your house has to be like torn down. This, how this spreads or whatever it is, is, is it can't be good. All right. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, which is interesting because we now have cotton garments, right? And so um, they're only talking right here of two different garments, but I'm sure... Keep going. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Nicole. Whether it be in the warp or woof... What's a weft? It says woof. It says warp or in the weft. Says woof. Mine says whether it be woven or knitted. Oh, wow! Uh, woof. Warp or in the woof weft. means knitted. Mine says the weft. It's like a little kid. Yeah, and we should. I like woof her. better. It's more pack life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whether it be in the warp or woof of linen or of woolen, whether it in a skin or in anything made of skin. All right, but I'm sure it's got to be any garments at all. This is probably everybody got wool or linen back then. And if a plague be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of skin, it is a plague of leprosy and shall be showed unto the priest. Okay, what's the woof again? The warp and the woof? Mine says whether it's woven or knitted. So either in the woven or in the knitted is what that should say, probably. All right, 50. And the priest shall look upon the plague and shut up it that has the plague seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day. If the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof or in the skin or in a skin or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a fretting leprosy. He is unclean. All right, this so, is leather. Mine says leather, not skin, the work of leather. Right, so this is interesting about leprosy. I mean, this is not a, uh, this is not nothing to. This thing be, like grows. It grows and it grows on all your stuff. And like all your stuff is like completely unclean. That mold is just mold. I don't think it's just mold, man. I think we'd all be dead long ago if it was just mold. We have mold all over the place. All right. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether knitted or, what is it, knitted or woven, woven warp or woof, in a, wo in a woolen or in a linen or anything of skin wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy. Wow, it's a fretting leprosy. It shall be burned in the fire. Wow, it's a fretting. So it's an active leprosy. Active, yeah, active leprosy, and it goes to everything. So it's interesting that it would go into clothes like that and go into leather. It's like it almost lives on that stuff. All right. And the priest shall look and behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of skin. 
Then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague. After that it is washed, and behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. You shall burn it in the fire. It is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. Anyone have anything better than that? It is rotting or corroding. Rotting or corroding. Okay. And if the priest look and behold, the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, then he shall rend it out of the garment or out of the skin or out of the warp or out of the woof. Okay. So what? The plague be somewhat dark after it? the washing of it. So, wow, that's crazy. It's almost like it's mold. Yeah, that's why the NIV says mold. If the mold. infection shall look and see that the infection has faded after washing it, then he shall tear it out of the garment, and out of the or the of out of the warp or of the weft. Oh, you had a warp too. I had a warp and the weft. All right. Woof. Woof. A little kid trying to say left. Woof, woof. Woof. All right. And if it appear still in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof. Or in anything of skin, it is a spreading plague. You shall burn that wherein the plague is with fire. And the garment, either warp or woof, or whatever, whatsoever thing of skin it be, which you shall wash, if the plague be departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time and shall be clean. Okay, so how, does, how do you guys know what this is? You shall wash it. If the plague be departed from them, then it shall... Okay, so if, I guess if it's gone, then it's clean. Okay, this is the Torah of the plague of leprosy in a garment of woolen or linen either in the warp or of the woof or anything of skins to pronounce it cling or to pronounce it unclean. All right. Woof, woof. We got it. We made it through. Um, anyone have anything? Wash yourselves. Yeah, wash yourselves. Uh, wash yourselves well. And uh, You don't want what this is. Yeah, you don't want this. And I mean, I would say that, that the mold that we have is not the same kind of mold that they have. I think there's different kinds of mold because, I mean, our mold is definitely a bad thing. Um, but it, I mean, you can, it doesn't kill you. I know some people have black mold and things like that that kills them and the, the stuff, but I mean, we kind of just live with it. It's kind of wet down here. And so it just kind of goes. It's very humid. Yeah. In fact, our dogs eat it with no problem whatsoever. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that we feed. I mean, we, we've ended up with something like just beyond what we should feed our dogs. And the dogs are like, please, please, please. We're like, man, we'll probably end up killing the dogs and they love it. Never puke, never do nothing. It's just like nothing ever happened. So these animals, that's why you don't eat dogs, right? They're absolutely unclean. They can eat stuff like that, and it doesn't phase them at all. All right, everybody, thank you guys very, very much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your attention on this, and we appreciate your comments. Um, to everybody who's commenting that helps us out with this stuff and um, gives us little tidbits of information, um, we are no experts in this. We've so talked about this before. We are always learning. We are always growing. Um, and we're always trying to find new commandments, and we're trying to please our creator in every way. Jade. How do people become saved? Well, they first start by believing Yehoshua is their savior and that he died for their sins. And but you have to be. And who's Yehoshua? Yehoshua is the son of Yahuwah, God. He would be known as most people to Jesus. Right, and so we have we know him as as Messiah. I I, I say Messiah Yehoshua because I, I say it as Y A H U S H U A Yehoshua. Um, and you there's other ways of saying it like Yeshua, Yehosha, Yasha. Yeah. I've heard Yasha before. And so it, whatever that is, it's closer than the name Jesus, which did not appear until the 1600s, right? The 1611, King James was the first time they used that. And there were no J's until 1529. So we're talking uh, after death, 1500 years, uh, they didn't have the letter J. And so if we want to get the names right, uh, it's very important that we do that. So J, salvation begins at the cross, then what? And then once you once you ask to repent, you must know what you're repenting for. You're repenting for breaking his Torah, his law. And when you repent and understand that, then you start following his law and you start walking down a narrow path. And what happens to those that reject it, Kate? Uh, Yahushua will tell them, depart from me, ye who work iniquity. Ye, I never knew you. Depart from me. But Eli, if you fulfill the Torah, doesn't that mean the Torah is gone? It was never fulfilled, and nobody was doing the Torah correctly then. So by fulfilling it, he was fixing what they were doing wrong. He was telling them that they were doing it wrong. What do you mean nobody's doing the Torah right? We had Pharisees and Sadducees. Surely they were doing the Torah right. That's the perfect no, example they came, of doing it wrong. They, they came out of slavery. They came out of basically the oppression of the Babylonians. They came out with a whole new law they called the Talmud, the oral Torah. And they came out with a thousand different laws, things that were very 
burdensome that are actually burdensome that were actually hard to do but they kept on doing it and that's what they were pushing on the people thinking they were doing it in the name of Yah and Yahushua came to tell them that they weren't even keeping the Torah correctly that he was trying to bring his people back to the original state of the Torah and get them away from the oral Torah yeah, and I guess that is the, the biggest problem about if you call yourself a Jew. If you call yourself a Jew, not only do you keep the Talmud, but you also keep the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah is how to speak to demons and is how to control demons and things of that nature. That is all within uh, what they call the Zohar and all of this mystical Babylonian mumbo jumbo that they come out with. And how do we know that the Talmud is not correct, Jade. Because of what it's the things it says in there, the evil it speaks is against the Torah. It does not go to where it contradicts Torah and says things against the Torah. Okay, Eli, how do we know the Talmud is not what we should be studying? Because Yah didn't tell us to keep it. All right, okay. How do we know the Talmud is not something that we should keep? Because it defies our Messiah. It blasphemes our Messiah. All right, hold on. Jason. I'm going to see why is the Talmud something we should not keep? Well, there are laws inside of the Torah that tell us not to add to and not to take away from anything. So if we take anything that is outside of the Torah, then we are adding to it and we are taking away from it and we're creating our own set of laws. And we don't need that because we have perfect laws. We have wonderful laws. We have a creator that loves us so much that not only did he design you uniquely, but he, he positioned us all for a time such as this. If you believe that you have just awoken in the end times at the end of 6,000 years and the world is in, in disarray and that you were not picked for a time such as this, I do not believe that is correct because I believe we are all here for a reason. And if you are listening to these uh, law, statutes, and commands of Yah and you're listening to this stuff, if you're reading your Bible, if you're seeking Yah in every way, then he has commissioned you. He has commissioned you for these end times, and these end times are going to get crazy. They're going to get where we need extreme amount of courage. But like I said before, I do not fear the world anymore, and I did. I lived in complete fear, and probably the reason my heart is at the edge, probably at the end, with high blood pressure, um, is because I sat and I worried about things for so long. But we cannot worry about everything. Why don't we worry about things, Cade? Because Yahuwah has a plan for us. He knows what is going to happen, and we have to rely on him to the end. Our daddy is more powerful than anything ever. Our daddy loves us. Our father is the one who has given us everything. He gave you guys life. He gave you guys, he blessed our lives with you guys. He blessed his family and everything and everything that we're doing is for a reason. And so we need to be speaking to others about the Torah. We need to tell people, we need to teach. If you know about the Torah and others don't, we need to be a light in this time. We need to ex exercise our abilities and our God-given talents to go and tell people about the Torah and to speak to them. Because a lot of people, you'll talk to thousands and thousands and thousands of people and they'll all turn away. They'll all say that the, the laws are nailed to the cross. They do not care what our creator says. And then you will say something like, well, you know, one of the Shema is that we must love our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul. And if you are saying that you love our creator with your heart, mind, and soul, but you reject his laws, you are rejecting him. It's like you guys. It's like my boys here. If they reject the Torah of our house, it feels very bad. And, infor and unfortunately, d your dad, me, doesn't have the patience that our father, Yah, has. And it, it becomes a little more stricter around here. So, with that, um, thank you guys very, very much. Uh, much love to everybody out there. And um, anyone have anything? Read your, no, Bible. read your Bibles. Um, have a good day. Have a good day. Shalom. 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 Shalom.